guys, I've made you wait long enough. Today is the reveal of the deer blind that we're building for Flair. We got a snowstorm outside, so I would love to have had it outside, but I didn't want to keep you waiting any longer, so I'm gonna do the reveal in my shop here. You guys are gonna see this inside and are gonna be so impressed. I'm so tickled on how it turned out. I was able to get a lock on this thing, so let's go up inside and give you guys the full tour. This place inside and we close it up so it's nice and quiet so here we go as you come in the door we have the heater right here and this heater which is nice it's all electric but it has charging stations in the back and it's got a little tray so I keep the, the fan remote the heater remote and then I have the TV remote get the TV up in the corner it's on a swivel so if I want I can pull it out move it out of the way check that out and then I can move it back here most of the time, it seems to be just fine. So we've made this area. I'll start towards the back and we'll work forward. The countertops are all the butcher block wood. You saw me pick those up at Home Depot. Remember, this window is something we added. I listened to you guys. So we have windows on all four corners of this. And this window slides up and it's a little higher off the ground. So it's not as convenient as the others, but we were able to get one in here. So we have outlets for the coffee maker. We have a cooler, which is nice. We've elevated this cooler off the ground so that it also doubles as an L, kind of a nice U-shaped kitchen. So this is up off the ground. Oh, I like this. So if you're getting beers, bottles of beers out of here, check out, we even have a bottle opener right above there. Now, underneath, we left the cabinet open, brought in water, store water tanks for storage. We have to winterize it all the time. So we still can continue to add and improve on what we built here, but for now, we're making it kind of a day place, maybe in one night, overnight stay, but it's so nice. It could be a place you want to stay for at least a week. This thing is insulated, like unbelievable, soundproof. We'll show you the video of how we insulated everything with a, it's an open cell foam. It filled up this entire cavity, fills up all the gaps. It's great for sound. Then all we had to do was basically add these reclaim wood all the way around it. No drywall inside this, it's all reclaim wood. This wood is heavy enough and there's really no need for drywall because that insulation fills the entire two by four walls. And if you remember, when we built this, the walls are all two by four. We insulated the floors, insulated the ceilings all the way around. I'm real excited to see how this performs once we get outside, out in the environment, kind of test it. If someone's inside talking, can the deer and the wild animals really hear what's going on? So, hey, I have an idea on how we can test the soundproofing of this. Let me go get my air horn, I'll stand in my shop and you guys stand inside with um, Brandon, my camera guy. I'll honk the horn and then see what kind of decibel or what kind of reading we get. So let's go check it out. Okay, I just got my horn. I'm going to go stand over here, close this door, and you guys let me know how loud it is. I'm, I'm sure you're going to hear it because it's not that soundproof, but let's give it a test. Here's with the windows open. That's loud. of building this we had to modify the wheel wells this is the wheel well we have this on both sides so we took that box we had to box it out because the tire is up inside there so I raised this up and then we created this stand so that the heater is elevated which then gave us some more storage underneath here but at the same time we framed in this gun safe on the opposite side, we had to build it up the same way we built up for the cooler. So the cooler's elevated, and then we still continued that reclaim wood look all the way around, which then really makes the wheel wells disappear. So we took something that was a limitation, which they're saying an architect's best friend is limitations, because when you're limited, it forces you to get creative. And that, we solved that problem, being creative by saying, let's make this a storage area, and that's a perfect spot for a cooler. We thought we we're gonna put refrigerators there. The cooler we feel works out a lot better. You're only gonna be in this thing maybe a day or two at a time. And if you have a refrigerator, it demands power. And we're trying to go as much off the grid as possible. So if you don't need power, you have a cooler with full ice that will last quite a long time. And that's another reason why we didn't really put in a, a sink. You gotta drain the water. You're gonna to have to have a pump to pump that. I know there's some battery powered stuff. We're also looking down the road, we probably go back to solar. This is something that we wanted to get done as quick as possible, but as we start using it, we're gonna want to maybe think about stuff that we can add to it. But something more use of this would be is maybe winter, fall, 
It is pretty darn nice. You can almost use this baby in the summer for fishing. Another idea someone had was we should probably come back and look at some point and maybe drill in a couple holes in the floor. We'll slide a sleeve of PVC pipe down. Now you've got the ultimate ice fishing lodge. So a lot of uses for this thing. For me, it could also work as a doghouse. If my wife says, hey, that's it, you're gone for a while, I can go hang out in my rolling man cave and just park this thing wherever I want. Check out this beautiful door. This is the door we bought. We stay in this door, a little different color, kind of matches the countertops, just adds a little contrast so everything isn't so matched. Matchy matchy. But as it opens up, we even have a little squeak in the door. It's kind of nice. We continued the uh, tin around the base. It's also that also covers pretty good when guys are doing their business standing up and hitting the walls. It doesn't soak into the wood. So we have all the reclaimed wood. This all came out of my shop. Every piece of this reclaimed wood. It's got its own light in there. We're going to have put some hooks where you can hang up gear, coats, what have you. So it doubles as a closet. And then as you're going down the road, we put this hook on here so that the door stays stays locked. That keeps the door from swinging open when you're traveling. So let me make a way around. We had some conversations about this kitchen island. We're gonna try it out right now this way. I have ordered hardware that will allow me to cut this and allow this to swing down so it gets out of the way. I like that idea and I wanted to get this in the hands of Flair to see if he really likes what we're doing here give him a chance to try it out if it is in the way that is a simple fix we'll just saw cut right here add the hinges underneath and this will fold down but as i walk around oh hold on before i go around you guys notice this is the gun safe that we have built in we got a place on top here for gear pistols what have you they all have little locks on them and then if you want to store your guns oh, there we go it looks heavier than it is it's not heavy at all. So this is just a little pellet gun for display. So this can handle up to uh, five guns. And then we have storage underneath the heater. And look at this old gun wooden box I put together that we found in the shop. So you can keep all your ammo in, in this nice little wooden box, which fits with the whole rustic reclaimed wood theme. And then for fishing, you know, we're not always going to be hunting out of this. I went and put up the fishing poles right above the sliding glass door. That's a nice use of space. And this here is a wood duck my son Max shot. So he let me have that to display inside here. I'm sure I'll have to get that back flare. He has his own stuff. I wanted to show how we can display mounts and all the stuff to make this personalized, make it yours. So as we come around, let me come around here. You can see this countertop. I created a storage space. So all these little bar stools, I got three of them right now. I can bring all these out, set them down, but we also have storage for them. Now you can get, there's three, I can easily get four. So four guys can sit around this island. And what we did, we left this at 36 inches tall. It's bar stool height. Works out really nice. You can sit here and relax a little bit. But also when you're hunting, you spin around, which I'm not a hunter, I'm thinking this is the way to go. You will open up the window, I had these made. These are some nice little elbow pads you put on here. So if you want to, you can use this to angle and get the right angle and the, so it's more comfortable. What's the right word you guys use when you hunt? You want to be able to use this as the steady your, your shot. So I have one over here and I have another one over here. I didn't fasten them down. That way they're, they're movable, portable, because you're not always going to have them on this windowsill. That I thought was a nice feature you guys suggested and I had those made. As you come around, I went and found some of these old traps that I was digging out of my house that I had sitting in the shop. So I hung them on the wall, a little bit of us guys, kind of our artwork. Here is a sub panel that runs the entire deer blind. So all the breakers are right here. We have a ceiling fan that I, it's actually a wall fan, but I was able to get it in the corner so it's out of the way. And it just has a little switch up here. You turn it on. And this thing starts blowing air. I don't know if you can hear that. It also oscillates. So I thought this is a great way to open up some windows and it moves air. Can you hear that thing? It's like a little airplane engine. I'll turn that off. Again, that was in my shop I used. We've been putting them on people's houses on the back patio mounted on the wall versus the ceiling because a lot of times those, the wind blows, it breaks them, they fall apart. And so this is a nice feature. I used it in here. Check out the furniture. This is just a temporary thing, but I don't know if you guys remember, I have an airboat, and so I just bought these at a boat show. They're like beanbag chairs. There's hardly any weight to these things, and they mold to your body when you sit down. You can even rock this baby into almost like a little bed. 
So I thought I wanted to show you guys something in this space, how it can be used. Most likely, uh, I'd like to see like a couch, a hide a bed, and uh, that way I get multiple guys can sit down and hear people. So these beanbag chairs is kind of what they're they're weatherproof. They're very durable. They're very lightweight, and this is something that I use on my boat. But I thought maybe I could use it here in this camper. So you got a little flicker. I don't know what's going on. So these beanbag chairs are just something that I wanted to show in here that this is naturally a, a spot where the furniture would go. It could be a couple more chairs, maybe a table. Depends on how Flair wants to use this, but a hide -a bed would work out really nice. And again, this is another window that you would slide open and have a lot of range to shoot with. So the ceilings, we went ahead and we put in these reclaimed wood beams. These are the same beams I put in Flair's cabin. So again, we're going for that little mini version and we also used all the wood. We cased everything out with reclaimed wood. Only thing we painted inside this cabin, inside, I'm calling it a cabin, a little deer blind, was the ceiling. We painted that black. And then we did a quick coating on top of the wood chopper block to kind of seal that in. So very little painting involved. We did stain the outside to protect the cedar wood, but we have a metal roof on top. It's basically a maintenance-free uh, rolling man cave, deer blind, possum lodge, whatever you want to call it. So if you guys remember, the accent I wanted to do is this, this is all galvanized metal and it comes out real shiny. And so we took it outside and we laid it all out in the street and I sprayed this acid wash on it. It was diluted down to just get a little bit of a rust look. Since then, you guys have gave me some tips where you might add peroxide or vinegar. I would like to have done that, but I didn't know it at the time. It still came across a little bit of the rust look that we're after. So I appreciate those inputs. So next time if I do it, I'm going to try some of those applications as well. But for now, we still have that metal look and it creates a nice wainscoting around here, a little different look. Some of the comments was maybe this is going to be echoey and noisy when you're out hunting. But literally when you're inside here, it's very soundproof. Maybe the horn would be the test. So this, when we did it, we also added the reclaimed wood base. So this is just two by six reclaimed wood. It really, what it came from was a deck that we demoed. So this was a green treated deck. After 25 years, it starts to fall apart and it actually turns a beautiful color. And that's what we use here and here. And then this wood is what also came out of my shop, came out of this building that I, I bought and remodeled the whole thing. It was from like 1899, 1900. So all this wood came out of my office. It's just beautiful. I never knew what to do with it. I have used some accent walls in other homes, but now I have my very own, not mine. I keep saying that. I want one of these things. So now we were able to create this unique rolling man cave cabin. And I think Flair is really going to enjoy this. Thank God I'm his neighbor because hopefully he'll let me borrow it at some time. It's only eight foot wide and 12 foot long. And there's a lot of nice use of space. I feel that you have a living room. You've got your kitchen island right here. You've got a bathroom, a place for your guns. There is a back bar kitchenette, if you will, to put on. You got your cooler, place to hang out. I don't know what else you need. We also put disc lights in here and there's dimmers on these lights. So you can dim these lights down the outside uh, of the camper or the outside of the deer blind has two big floodlights. So the idea there is that you can, at night, if you're doing something, you want to light up out in the country where you're at, you can see there's also dimmers on that as well. And I do have some mesh that I ordered. It's a camouflage that I'll show you when we take this thing outside that we will use to cover all the exterior windows. You're telling me we have too much open glass and the live and the wildlife will be able to see in and will scare them. So I have mesh that will go over this that you can push out of the way when you're hunting. You got your arm pad, window opens, the mesh, push it out of the way. I'd love to hear from you guys and hear what your thoughts are on what you would do different. What should we add to what we already have here? Because again, this is a work in progress. We think we're about 90% done. There's always something we should add. There is going to be a generator on the front of this. And I'm looking at maybe doing the inverters so it isn't so loud, but also the idea behind an inverter or a, a battery charge generator is to keep it quiet so you don't always have that sound. So there's always new and improved ways that we can add to and make this the ultimate rolling deer blind man cave. So remember I was telling you about what I was going to cover up all the exterior windows with. I haven't opened this up yet, but I bought this online. 
and it's made for outdoor use. So I will open this up. I have a big one for the sliding glass door and I have a couple small ones for each of these windows that I will attach to the outside, probably find some nails, screw them in, find some bunch, something bungee cords to hold them in place so they're not blowing in the wind. But I have several of these that I'll be mounting once I get this outside and give it the full once around, all the way around the outside. So we'll see how incognito we can be with this rolling deer blind. I really wanted you guys to see how this turned out. It turned out, I think, fantastic. I'd love to hear from you guys. The goal today was to try to do the outside, inside, but because of the weather, we had a snowstorm. I'm gonna do another video where I take this trailer, I'm gonna take it to a truck stop. I'm gonna weigh it. I'm real curious, like you guys are, how much does this thing weigh? Because remember, we beefed up the axles on this trailer. It was an old boat trailer, pretty nasty. We came in and rebuilt the whole thing, put a whole new axle on it. What's nice where I'm standing this is we have these jacks that come out on all four corners that makes this thing real stable. So the next video, will be us taking this thing out of the shop, officially getting it on the road, and we're gonna take it to a truck stop, weigh it, then we're gonna take it all the way out, and uh, we're gonna surprise and really gift this thing to Flair and see what his reaction is now that it's all done. He has never seen this thing, and I'm so excited to see what he thinks, and I hope it's still deer hunting season because I would love to be able to experience this with flair for the first time and my first time deer hunting that would be awesome so i'm gonna weigh this thing and i'd like to hear from you guys we'll have a little contest who can guess the weight of flair's rolling deer blind leave a comment down below and if you guess i will send you a brad the builder hat and a t-shirt so let's have some fun with that i really appreciate you guys watching please continue to subscribe and stay tuned for that next show it's going to be fantastic for the full reveal i'm brad the builder i'll see you on the next job site Oh, you guys still here? So am I. I don't want to leave this place. So I found out that I had stocked this a little earlier. We might as well have a beer together. Check out my new little opener. I'm going to sit and uh, you guys, why don't you stay with me? I'll have a little chair. Sit right here and let's watch some Brad the Builder till my wife calls me. Hopefully it's not too soon. Cheers.